for joining us and uh, looking forward to it. It's been a really fun week. And as you guys are living, it has changed from Monday to today. It has been completely different in terms of the news around COVID-19 and every respective school and, and of course your state. So we'll get into that in a minute, but I wanted to start for you guys. What has been the most enjoyable, creative, surprising part about dealing with your student athletes in these times that no one could have predicted? Coach Cristobal, we'll start with you. Most creative thing, I think maybe some of the guest speakers were able to bring in on some of these Zoom meetings that we orchestrate. Some of the former players having a Marcus Mariota or a Michael James pop on there and be able to share their side, you know, their story and um, provide some inspiration for our guys and some guidance has been really neat. But again, I think the first day when you see all those boxes light up and you kind of feel like you're on the Brady Bunch, like super size, I thought that was an eye opener. But all in all, I think it's been the guest speakers. Excellent. Coach Wilcox, how about you? You know, the thing that's been uh, really neat to see is just how the guys enjoy each other. I think any time you have a chance to, to get on there with them, whether it's a position meeting or a group meeting or a team council, um, they really like the engagement of seeing each other and how the smiles on their faces and the banter um, that they probably miss, you know, and I know they miss and we all do. And, you know, initially that first week was probably get home and try and get your bearings, but you start missing your teammates and missing the, the people in your organization. It's been really neat to watch them and how much they care about each other and uh, how they keep up with each other and motivate each other. So I think that's been kind of the, the really uh, special thing to watch as we've been through all this. I like it. Coach Summer? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that, uh, you know, the big concern is as we were apart, how does your team continue to grow? How does it build? Uh, what's the camaraderie of, like? Because when you're quarantined and, and stay home policies, what's that like? But when you watch and, and, and like Mario and Justin said, there's a bunch of different pictures across there. Guys are genuinely happy to see each other. The conversation is more than just football. You know, what you realize is between uh, the, the outside speakers, between the football, between just life, decking on people, guys really care about each other. And you're still able to build a team even through one of the, the toughest times that, that, that we've seen is probably as, as, as coaches. Yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been interesting to watch and track your guys' social media. Uh, Coach Crystal, I, I got to say, I loved it when you were outside of Justin Herbert's house when he got drafted. That to me was surprising and was amazing. <laughs> as, uh, I know that was a fun night for everybody. Uh, but, but going back to you, Coach Cristobal, can you just paint a picture of what, what's it like now? Because I imagine every day, well, it may feel like Groundhog's Day, like your meetings as a head coach and trying to figure this thing out, they must change. Can you glean a little insight into that? Well, you still got to stay fresh as a teacher, whether you're doing this via Zoom or doing this in person. And again, some uh, teams have, what, three or four days of spring ball. Some had none. You have the entire season. You've probably ripped through that already. So what are you showing? What are you detailing for them to try to advance, try to get better uh, in this game, increase your football IQ? How creative can you get with some of the testing mechanisms that you have online? Or how do you mix it up? You know, is it time for one of the players to lead a meeting or uh, have one of the graduate assistants take his or his turn in front of the entire group and, and kind of take his steps in developing as a football coach? So all that stuff has been great. But just like, you know, Coach Wilcox, Coach Shung were saying, the interactions, and I thought something that happened by accident, day one that was really neat is we were waiting for everybody to zoom in there. And there were guys were in there early to try to get the you know, earlys on time. So we got a bunch of guys in there 15, 20 minutes early. And some of the conversations and some of the joking around laughter going on was absolutely hysterical. We actually let it run for an extra 10 minutes because everyone was getting such a kick out of it. So all that stuff is, uh, is critical. But again, human contact, like the coaches mentioned, really, really critical. Excellent. All right. So Coach Sumlin, uh, your state is going to allow an element of human contact coming up here on Monday, at least as of now, I believe. Um, how have you talked to your players and their families about that? And what's the process among even your staff and your building? Yeah, well, we, you know, we, that's an ongoing process, right? So um, it's like anything else. It's, it's, uh, I think David Shaw said it's, it's, it's fluid at best. So, you know, for us, you know, there's a lot of questions. I think the big thing has been communication with, with players and their families. Um, just about where we are and being honest. Uh, sometimes being honest about you don't know is okay, right? To just settle some people down. Um, you know, and just because of uh, the state is doing some things, where's your campus? 
you know, where, where do they stand on this? So, you know, everybody is, is, uh, is moving forward, but what's important is the state, the safety of our student athletes. Um, and, and, you know, particularly in, in our situation with maybe the opportunity to, to open some things up early, uh, our, our first and foremost concern is, you know, what are we going to do for the safety of our student athletes um, on off campus or as whatever we can do right now, but certainly uh, as they return to campus, what does that look like and what, what is our preparedness level? So uh, we, we've had that conversation with our players. We're continuing to have that conversation with our players with campus uh, so that, uh, you know, this, this, this thing is, as you said, if you had asked me this question, uh, you know, even Monday, it would have changed, right? Based on our, our governor's press conference, you know, yesterday or two days ago. So it changes constantly. Uh, and, and our thought process and, and what we are, our availability and what we need to do changes constantly with that. Yeah, I believe it. Coach Wilcox, there's been a lot of talk around California, right? With the Cal State Universities, the statement that came out, uh, a lot of people confusing that with the UC system, at least around the country. Obviously, they're not the same thing. But how have you talked to your team about it? And how are you planning around it in, in all the scenarios that may come to light? Yeah. Um, yeah, they are two separate entities. And, uh, you know, California is a big state. And there's a lot of information coming from the capital, but also, uh, more importantly, you know, the local uh, health officials. And so the neat thing to watch has been kind of our chancellor and, and our athletic director uh, and the modeling that's going on. And, you know, Coach Sumlin and Coach Cristobal and I have been on these meetings with the Pac-12 about different models of the season. But here locally on our campus, our, our chancellor and the committees they have on campus of modeling the different uh, structures, you know, that could come up. And, um, you know, we are always in action in, in gaining information. And there's going to be a time uh, that we're going to be able to come back and get together and uh, fully intent on uh, playing this season. Now, how we get to that point, you know, there's a daily, it changes, you know, when do we come back? Uh, when do we start working out together? Um, but every intention is to do that. And, um, you know, again, I've just been real impressed with locally our, our, our chancellor and our athletic director and how they're working through these different models because the information changes daily. Yeah, it's been impressive to watch all the leaders in, in every respective footprint. Uh, Coach Cristobal, uh, and everybody here as a new coordinator, I mean, you're coming off an incredible season. How have you been able to maintain the momentum and rebuild that too deep, let alone the roster? You lost a lot of players to the next level among having Joe Moorhead and some changes on your staff. Well, we're really fired up about our changes. I mean, we're looking at a couple of guys that are complete professionals, you know, tremendous amount of energy and passion. Um, these guys, have, we feel, are going to upgrade our program in a lot of different facets. But uh, I think what they, uh, what they brought to the table, along with the fact that we we feel like we've established a really good culture, okay, and and not just a word to throw around out there, not just a tagline. We have miles to go. Well, we recognize that, but we feel that what has been established from a mindset standpoint, from a standard of expectations and operation, that it's going to be on the players. And like Coach just mentioned, at some point in time, that ball's going to be teed up, and we're going to play ball. And, and the team that handles this kind of stuff the best is – is probably going to have the best chance to have a successful season. So those changes are something that, you know, we look forward to in a positive way. Uh, whatever is thrown our way, um, you deal with it and absolutely make zero excuses as to not having enough time or not being able to meet enough together. There will be time. In the meantime, is continue to zoom away, continue to stay in touch, and most importantly, build stronger relationships with those players. These new coaches did not spend much time around them. They have to, on a daily basis, build those relationships so that that trust is really formed and that they can move forward and really trust each other. Yeah. You just following up on that coach Sumlin, bringing Paul Rhodes, you guys all got in about one week of practice and spring practice. How have you been able to do that with, with a whole new side of the ball? Well, you know, it's, it's just like Mario said, you know, as a new coach or particularly guys on defense coming in, they, the, the good news is that they did get to see three or four practices, right? So there's, there's a little bit of evidence on film, uh, some meeting time, some workouts. So they have a little bit of an idea athletically uh, up close. Uh, the developmental part, that, that obviously did not happen. But what happens now? And I think 
Mario hit it right on the head. You know, it's about communication. It's about trust. It's about, and, and you know, during this time, the Zoom, our Zoom uh, situations have been not just about football, but about life and getting to know guys, getting to know the family. So some of these, sometimes, you know, your mom will peek their head in behind the Zoom, you know, say hi. And, and everything we do is not about X's and O's, particularly during the last, you know, month and a half, two months, because, you know, lives have been changed. Lives have been turned upside. Everybody's got a different situation. And our coaches uh, have been and needed to be invested in our players' lives outside of football and, and that the quickest way for I think for new coaches, you know, to, to really to really flourish and, and, and do the things that they need to do to be successful is to gain trust. And uh, you know, you'd say that's hard to do when you're not in front of them. I mean, right there face to face. But believe me, we've had enough meeting times through Zoom that the guys know uh, from everything from uh, you know cookouts and, and virtual cookouts, uh, you know, virtual everything. So. Yeah, it's been a different a different way to do things, but uh, I think our guys, particularly defensively, the new guys, and our staff in general has has done have done a nice job of of really communicating with our players and gaining that trust in this time where where everybody's not together. Coach Wilcox, you know you guys lost some guys up front to injury last year, but you bring back a quarterback. He's been in the program for a long time, and you bring in a new system on offense. What's that been like? You know, whether you deinstall everything, do you kind of hold back a little bit? How are you there? Yeah, well, uh, similar to the other coaches, you know, we got a weekend, which for us was four practices. And, uh, you know, it might seem like a small number, but to be able to get four practices in and those corresponding meetings uh, during those days and then the off days, it was really, really productive. And uh, thanks to technology and Zoom and Exos and uh, Kahoot and all these different platforms, we're able to you know, engage with the guys on football. And um, we spent a ton of time doing that. Um, I don't know how we would have ever done anything like that back in my day. So they would have faxed it to you or who knows. I don't know if it would have worked. But, uh, you know, the ability to, to engage with them during those meetings has been critical. And we got a, quite a bit in offensively, put a ton of it in. And it's a credit to our new coaches and how they handled that and also our players digesting it. But it's been really productive. And as uh, you know, the other coaches mentioned, I think this time with this, again, Zoom and FaceTime and all this, I mean, they're getting to know the guys, even though they're not next to them, they're still able to get to know them because there's a lot of dialogue going on, whether it's football or nothing to do with football, uh, which is really important in this whole process. I'm going to go one more with you guys and we'll open it up to the media. But Coach Cristobal, um, obviously, you know, recruiting as well as anybody. What are the discussions like around recruiting, the recruiting calendar, all the things that seem to be, you know, flipped upside down to a certain degree right now? And, and how are you and your staff approaching and managing that? Well, it's, you know, we spend a lot of time now on our conference calls talking as coaches, and there's some unbelievably, there's some great ideas and um, a lot of tentative planning that goes on, a lot of hypotheticals. And like, you know, Coach Wilcox mentioned you sometimes it moves from plan A to plan B within hours, within days. So you're prepared to move on. You go uh, not having people on campus and actually seeing your place is difficult for every coach because at the end of the day, facilities are great and, um, you know, videos are fine. But to be able to sit with people face to face and get to know those people and take a deep dive into one another and build relationships, there's nothing like that. So yeah, it's certainly a, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge for everybody. Uh, these challenges are not unique to us or, or any other school. We all face them. And in the meantime, you know what? It puts into perspective how important it is to take advantage of every single opportunity on a campus, on a Zoom call, uh, getting to know a family member, a coach, uh, taking a deeper dive into not only highlight film, but game film to see how a guy really responds in all kinds of situations and, and during a game and practice. So. Uh, it's a test. It's a test that we're all going under, and, uh, you know, we, we accept the challenge. Yeah, you hope that high school seniors don't lose their senior year. These guys that haven't, you know, maybe been offered yet or on the fringe. Uh, coach Sumlin, your strength coach, I've been tracking him and the, the stuff he's done online with your players. What are the conversations around that? Is, you know, some states may open and kids can work out. Some may not. Can you take us inside the meetings at all around the strength and conditioning part? Yeah, you know, uh, Coach Johnson, he's done a great job. If anybody follows him on, on social media, uh, you know, the, the suggestions are not just for 
uh, for our team or for people that were just uh, in, in, in quarantine. And, and a lot of the workouts had uh, non, uh, you know, not, no, no real equipment in them, bags, water bottles, uh, things that they can do and, and things that, uh, that uh, anybody could have done through, do, through this process. So, you know, but between uh, our meetings, you know, the creativity of our staff, the creativity of, of everything that, that uh, from recruiting, but actually to, to strength and conditioning, that's an everyday, everyday conversation. And what does that look like uh, if and when return to play happens, uh, when that date happens, how we're going to progress our players back into uh, the type of physical conditioning that, that uh, they need to, to be in to, to practice and, and perform for a season. So, you know, th those conversations happen every day. And uh, the, 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 other, the other piece is, what does that plan look like? And, and as the other coaches have alluded to, you know, we've basically since, uh, since the end of March have met as, a, as coaches uh, with our league uh, and have developed uh, different plans of attack from uh, from a, a return to play standpoint, whatever those week periods look like, uh, what those practices, what those workouts will look like, because it's our job to prepare our guys to prepare to play football and then be reactionary, just like Justin said, that, that plan might change and go from A to B in, in a couple of minutes or a day but our jobs are, are to prepare our team to be ready to play in, in, in the fall. And uh, our strength coaches are a huge, huge part of that because uh, for the time that our players have been away, uh, for player safety, uh, for their well-being, to, to, for them to be in the type of shape to play at this level, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have to be cognizant of where they're coming from, what they're doing when they get back on campus, uh, and, and, and at the rate and the speed that they do that. Excellent. And Coach Wilcox, um, there's so much influx, as we've talked about, right? Fluid is the, is the word of the week, uh, let alone the word of the last 50 plus days, and I think will continue to be so. But if there isn't an equal start to the season, you know, whether it's this conference or others, what changes do you want to see to make sure that the end of the season gives everybody the same opportunity to compete for a playoff spot? Yeah, you know, to say it's going to be the same throughout every state and every conference, uh, it's probably going to be difficult, you know, just there's so many dynamics involved. Um, at the end of the day, you know, uh, each and every conference uh, is going to make their decisions with some direction from the NCAA. And as long as, you know, the, our conference um, realizes the importance, and we do, of being aligned with the CFP and, and all the entities involved, I mean, that's critical, you know. So uh, everybody wants to play. Everybody's intent on playing as many games as we can, a full schedule if we're able. And if things change along the way, as, as Kevin said, then, you know, we'll be ready to adjust. But we need to be uh, working in concert with the other conferences and uh, the CFP uh, throughout the country to give us as normal uh, uh, experience as we possibly can. Excellent. Dave, I'll turn it over to you guys. Coaches, thank you for the time. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Thanks, Jimmy. Okay, at this time, we'll take questions from the media. And again, uh, media at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a raised hand symbol. If you have a question, press on the raised hand symbol and we'll get you in the queue. Uh, first question coming from Leo Haggerty. Go ahead, Leo. Need to unmute your line. This is on mute there. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Coach Wilcox, I want to pick up on what you just said. If you guys have a say in this, would you rather play, and again, this is assuming you can't start until the first week of October. Would you rather play an eight-game schedule and finish at the normal time, the end of November, beginning of December? Or would you rather play the 12 games, go into second semester, and play into January? So the hypothetical is, would we rather play eight? I just want to make sure I'm understanding your question here. Yeah, would you rather play eight? You're starting in October, first week in October. Would you rather just play eight games and finish at the normal time, or would you rather play the full season, go into second semester, and finish sometime in January? I guess I would say that's a difficult question to answer right now without more information. You know, what is, how does that affect uh, the other conferences, uh, the CFP? Uh, are, are we working in unison, or is that um, putting us on, out on our own, so to speak? So. 
I guess I wouldn't be able to answer that without more information because we've talked about these different scenarios. Uh, we've uh, been in these meetings where we've modeled, uh, geez, I don't know if we can count them, you know, hours and hours and hours of modeling different uh, seasons and what those would look like based on when the start time would be. But again, to answer that, uh, I think we'd have to have some more information. Coach Cristobal? Same question? Yes, sir, and then Coach Sumlin. <laughs> yes, um, well, again, along the lines of what Coach Wilcox just said, if everyone was held to the same standard and had the same regimen structure, I, I would always be in favor of playing 12 football games. Coach Sumlin? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we all, all want to play as much as we can play, right? But uh, just like everything else, you, you just brought up the example of different states opening at different times. Uh, there, there are a lot of different uh, things that can happen between now and, and, and the fall. And so it's really kind of hard right now to say, hey, what would you prefer um, based on uh, where things are at this point? So, yeah, and, and the alignment with all the other conferences, right, for, for the CFP, uh, what is everybody doing? Is everybody on the same page? Uh, what is what is the non-conference schedule look like for everyone? You know what 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 is that? So that is a very difficult question to answer right now based on the information that we have. Uh, we've got a number of models, but I don't think there's a guy uh, that that player or coach right now that that not only wants to play football but wants to play as much football as they possibly can in a safe manner. All right, next question, we'll go to James Crepia. James, go ahead. Thanks, a uh, question for Mario. Mario, I asked this to Jonathan Smith yesterday. Uh, last week, when Governor Brown was asked specifically about fans attending high school and college football games. She laughed about it and had the state health official answer. How did you feel upon hearing her reaction about football? Because I heard from some at the University of Oregon who were quite upset. And what's your message to Oregon fans and the community here in Eugene is, a lot of people in businesses not only look forward to football because they're fans, but they rely on football and lose a lot in terms of livelihoods if games are canceled or fan attendance is restricted or prohibited in any way. Well, you know, in terms of my reaction, I don't, I don't get to watch as much as maybe you might think. So I don't think um, matters involving a pandemic and the way that businesses and people are affected, lives are affected, right, from the student athletes to local businesses to you name it, the mental health of so many people that just live and die by the sports world and everything that comes with it. I don't think, I don't think anyone's taking this lightly. I don't think anyone thinks of it as a laughing matter. I, you know, we're all very, very hopeful and encouraged and enthused that the measures being taken and <clears throat> professionals involved in helping us establish protocols to, to get back to normalcy is something that we're all really, you know, encouraged about. And, um, we can control what we can control, and that's what we're going to do. And that, again, that provides us and, and encourages us to continue having a positive attitude and moving forward. So when the time comes, that we will be ready. So, but that's my best way to answer that. I, you know, I think that uh, we are encouraged. We are we are feeling that uh, at some point in time things are going to go well, and and we are. We're very mindful and very um, you know sympathetic and considerate of all the people affected by it because it's not just. A football game right it's the student athletes surrounding businesses uh, the community right a lot of stuff involved so we're all very uh, very mindful of that i had a question for kevin as well uh, on a different matter kevin as a sports fan i not understand we all want football back and your coaches you want football back but as a sports fan ordinarily in 10 days you'd be back home you'd be at the indy 500 that's very important to you <laughs> when will you feel comfortable again being a spectator in the tower terrors or at the paddock at indy and with the race being moved to August 23rd, are you planning to go this year when that's a week before your game or are you going to watch from home? Uh, I think your last question, I don't, I don't, I'm not planning on that. So I've talked to those guys. Um, this is a different question. I didn't expect that for, for everything that was there, but yeah. Um, you know, being a fan, that's, that's, it's difficult. You know, you, you don't get to be a fan a lot in this business, um, but this is a unique situation. And because of that, Hey, I, we get it. Uh, and I think, as I said before, as our other coaches have talked about, you know, this is a different time. And this, these are unique situations. 
Um, you know, you see what, what the professional golf is doing. You see what NASCAR is doing. You see what different, uh, different professional teams are doing. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. Uh, it's hard to, to, to really say, hey, look, uh, you know, as a fan, do you want to watch it? I think you, you, you saw the interest uh, last week. Uh, with UFC. That's probably one of the highest rated UFC uh, cards in, in the history of UFC, right? Because people wanted to see that. And that was on television. Um, so there's different ways to be a fan. Um, obviously, uh, for me, that, that, that is, uh, that'll be a, a telev television event, whether it's live or, or taped. But uh, uh, we plan on practicing during that time if, if things are right. All right, next question will come from Dennis Dodd. Okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? Good to go, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, for, for everybody, um, is, is this a chance just what we're going through and uh, what the Pac-12 is going through for the league to just kind of remake its brand, come out firing all guns? I mean, you know, all we're talking about is the Cal State system the last couple of days. I mean, we actually get the football, uh, you know, it might be pretty good. We'll start with Justin. Yeah, are you talking to – Dennis, I just want to make sure you said – is it a chance for us to to uh, rebrand? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, just everything. Yeah, there's been so much, you know, negative headlines the last few years. You know, wipe the slate clean, just come out, you know, guns blazing. Yeah, well, I know for us, I guess, and me personally, I know what kind of players and coaches and programs we have uh, in our conference. It's extremely competitive on all fronts. Um, in terms of the talent, in terms of the coaching, in terms of the institutions. Um, and um, we love, you know, going out and competing against these guys. I don't spend a ton of time uh, worrying about uh, narratives and things like that. I understand the question, but, right. uh, you know, we uh, – I think all of us uh, can't wait to get started and get playing. And uh, we would love to play, and we're going to do everything in our power to safely play as many games as possible. And uh, again, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I know our, our conference uh, is modeling and, and, and projecting to do just that. And so um, how that impacts us moving forward and the narrative out there, I don't know. But I know uh, we and, and the other schools in our conference are excited to go out and chance to, to compete. Thanks. Go to Mario. Oh, I, I agree 100% with Justin. Our, our branding is the way we play the game. And uh, I'm honored to be a member of a conference that has such prestigious coaches and coaching staffs. It's being reflected in the kind of recruiting, the caliber of an athlete that's being recruited and signed by our staffs. And if you look at the stretch run down to the postseason, so many of our teams had tremendous success and uh, really, you know, showed that the progress that's being made is something that's going to continue in an upward trajectory. So we're extremely fired up to get back on the field and represent this conference the way it should be. Kevin? Yeah, I, I think if you look at, and a lot of people don't know the investment from our, from our conference uh, behind the scenes and the meetings that we've had uh, with, with our commissioner, uh, with our league office, and with our coaches, um, really working on different scenarios to, to not only uh, play, play football in a safe manner, but uh, what does that look like from a competitive level? And, uh, you know, and, and, and what's best for our conference. So, you know, it, it shows you from our league office the, the commitment that they have for, for, uh, for our excellence. And, and that, like I said, that started way back in, in, in March. So, you know, from, from our stand, from my standpoint, um, yeah, it, it gives us an opportunity just like everybody else when this thing, uh, this thing goes green, you know, yeah. what, what, what does that look like for everybody? Because, uh, again, like many coaches have said, how you've handled this this part and how you handle everything that that uh, that's coming at you here in the next couple, three, four months uh, is going to determine not only your success, the league's success, uh, your team's success. So uh, and, and and trust me, just like everything that, that's been said here, those things are going to change uh, by day. So how that gets handled uh, and. And it's going to affect a lot of things, but how I think we, we are as prepared as a league based on uh, the meetings that, that we've had uh, and, and the scenarios that we've talked about, 
as anybody in the country. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, next question. We'll go to um, Michael Lev. Uh, Michael, your line is open. Hey guys, uh, I have two questions. One um, is specifically for Coach Sumlin, and then uh, the second one is for the group, and I'll ask them separately if that's okay. Um, Kevin, uh, Dave Hickey, your athletic director, announced a reentry task force today. I just wanted to know what you make of the steps that the athletic department and the university are taking to proactively attack this whole situation. Well, I, as I said earlier, you know, uh, based on the, the governor's uh, comments of, of, of a day ago, you know, we have to take that 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 stance. And I think uh, Dave has, and, and along with President Robbins, you know, the, the conversations that they're having about our campus become important based on, uh, you know, the, what what's what's opening in the state. So, uh, again, what we're doing as a university and what we're doing as a football program and what Dave is doing as an athletics director, it all starts with the safety of our, our student athletes. Uh, and, and what does that look like? Uh, down to the, you know, where they eat, whether, where they're gonna live, how we're gonna test them. Uh, I think Dr. Robbins has talked about uh, our testing program. So uh, there, there are a lot of, of things that, that go back into uh, re-entry and, and, and getting back on campus, but certainly uh, the people that, that, that matter, that, that are experts in those, in, in those fields, of, of the medical field, of, of logistics, of, of housing, uh, where those people are, everybody's got concerns, but they're, they're experts in that area. And to get their opinions, uh, to get their knowledge, to have the best plan possible for, for uh, return to campus, I think that's that, that is uh, extremely smart on, on Dave's part and, and on and on our, our on our president's part. All right, and the second question, um, I know that Coach Sumlin and uh, Coach Cristobal both had to take salary reductions. I'm not sure if Coach Wilcox um, has had to do that as well, but I just want to know, simply put, is that was that a difficult thing to do at all? Asking myself. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's, you know, during this time, it's a, it's a difficult and unprecedented time, right, in our world. And it's something that now more than ever, people have to show unity as a, we tackle this together. So, no, it wasn't difficult. And how about you, Kevin? No, I, I think, uh, just like Mario said, you know, this is a unique time. And, uh, um, and when you, all you have to do is, is turn on the news at night, read the paper, just get on the internet, and there's, you know, you, 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 you see the struggles of, of, of people across the country. And, uh, you know, from, from that standpoint and from uh, a standpoint of, hey, uh, you know, what can you do to help the situation at, at, at your university? Um, no, it doesn't become difficult at all. Yeah, do uh, you want me to answer that? Is he there? Yeah, go ahead, Justin, finish that up. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just speaking on Cal specifically, um, there's been a lot of discussions in different ways that um, some of us as coaches uh, and even administrators uh, that we can be part of the solution uh, in, you know, supporting our athletic department. And I'm 100 percent behind that. And there's just been a lot of different ways that we've discussed on how to do that. So that's where we're at. OK, next question will come from Jeff Ferrado. Jeff, your line is open. Jeff, you need to unmute your line. Can you hear me now? There you go. Beautiful. Justin, this is for Justin. Uh, first of all, Justin, are you saying that you have or have not uh, taken a pay cut at this point? And second of all, can you talk about, um, you mentioned earlier the possibility of doing a training camp somewhere off campus, perhaps like a quarantine area. Cal's done that at times in the past for different reasons. Uh, what are the logistical issues with that? Uh, how much? How much will the cost be a factor? And ha have you discussed specific sites that you might do that? Uh, to answer your first question, we, we haven't yet. Uh, again, I've been in touch with uh, Mr. Knowlton and uh, for the last oh, two months um, regarding how we can, how myself and I know other coaches as well want to be part of this and and be a part of the solution to help support the department. And so. 
Uh, we're still discussing that and I will be, uh, you know, given direction by them on how he wants uh, us to do that. Um, the second part of your question, everything is on the table. I mean, everything's on the table. Uh, so at, when we talk about all this modeling, whether it's at a conference level or at a uh, institutional level, we're looking at every scenario uh, based on, you know, where we're at at that current time. So whether that's, you know, June 1, June 15th, July 1, July 15th, August 1, there's just these different points where we're looking at, yeah, is that a possibility? It could be. And so we've modeled that out. Now, uh, how in depth you go on that, um, we've discussed kind of preliminary, um, uh, you know, logistics. And there are logistics involved, but those are the discussions that we're having on a daily basis. So there's no uh, no places you've identified yet as potential sites, or uh, we've discussed some different ones. Um, again, just uh, you know, but I'm probably going to leave it there. You know, we have discussed those. Uh, you know, the the idea of that if it becomes necessary, and it, it's not. We haven't. It hasn't been determined if that's going to be necessary. Again, this is all planning and modeling. So we could sit here and talk through, you know, an exponential number of scenarios, but to answer your question, we have talked about that. And if it was uh, a necessity in, in order for us to prepare to play, uh, then that would be something that we would consider. Thank you. Okay. And a uh, final question uh, for this afternoon will come from Tony Syracuse. Tony, your line is open. Hey coaches. Good afternoon. Um, Greg Sankey, Mark Emmert, a lot of these guys in different parts of the country have talked in the last 24 hours about how there are dozens of scenarios that are being discussed, both in a regional basis and a national basis. But one of the things that has been thrown out in the media in the last week is pushing college football to post January 1 to start. And all of your meetings at the coaches level, at the conference level, has that ever come up? And would you guys be in favor or opposed to it in order to buy more time to have a full season? I have one more word with you, Greg. It's Yana. Uh, which Who's coach would like to start? <laughs> Alphabetically, Arizona. Kevin. Um, I thought you were going to go with S. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Justin, Justin, you'd still be. Uh, I, I, I'll be honest with you. You know, we've had this. Discussions. I think the are, are different. Again, um, it, it's all about player safety. What's best for them? I think Tony that uh, it, it's more. It, it, after June, after January first, you get into some other issues, right? You get into some eligibility issues. You get into classes starting for the next semester. Uh, some guys who may have been able to graduate. Some incoming people. Uh, you know, and let's be honest, you know, if the NFL doesn't change what they're doing, um, you, you know, you got some guys that, that might be affected by the combine or, 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 or by the draft. So, and then, you know, what does that, what does that say for next season? Uh, what does that say for players uh, that are coming back to your program? And, and if that season starts, then are you trying to play 24 games in, in a, in, in a 12 month calendar? So, it's not as easy as that. And, and, and just looking at a January schedule that goes through that has, and impacts on a lot of different things, and in particular, uh, the spring and the, and, and the next fall. So, yeah, you know, it, those scenarios have been discussed. Um, everybody's got different, um, different opinions about it. But, you know, ultimately, uh, guys want to play football. The players want to play. The coaches want to coach. And we want the safest – model yet and if that's the model um you know that so be it but it's going to affect things um uh, for the next year more so than people are talking about right now yeah i'll echo what uh, kevin said it's an incredibly complex uh model and there have been discussions about that as i mentioned before we've talked about uh, really everything out there um, to a degree, some more in depth than others, but the, you know, the late start has been discussed and there are a lot of uh, uh, logistical issues with it. But uh, ultimately, if that's what's best for college football, then, you know, we would be on board. But I think uh, there would take a lot of planning, um, a lot of uh, logistical uh, work to get that done. And ultimately we don't know yet, you know, we're still, uh, gathering information and and if that's what it was then that's 
that's the way it's going to go, and we'll figure it out at that point. Um, but I think we've spent more time uh, with, you know, our, our normal schedule. And then from there, what are the modified schedules that could happen um, if, if need be? So. So that question has been perfectly answered by both Coach Sumlin and Coach Wilcox, <laughs> so you don't need me to answer anymore. But a lot of planning, right, guys? I mean, we've been in there hours and hours, so you know, wait and see, but there's a plan for everything. Great. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate that. This has been great all uh, four days with the coaches. Um, again, appreciate your time. This will be recorded and sent out to the media. Um, again, thank you today, and thank you to Yogi. Thanks, coaches. Appreciate it, guys.